what Paul does in the book of First and Second Timothy is to remind all of us who are going to be entrusted by God to lead his church. And by lead, I don't necessarily mean pastors and elders. I mean any sphere where God has asked you to be influential in his uh, church. You could be a children's ministries leader, you could be a youth leader, you could be a treasurer, a deacon, it doesn't matter really. As long as God has given you that opportunity, you could be a lesson study teacher uh, or, or whichever thing that God has asked us to do. What Paul does and shows us in the uh, both the first and second uh, letters to Timothy is that the highest quality of leadership in the church should be the ability to teach God's people the right thing. And I think that that is something that is disappearing in many of our churches today. A lot of our leaders in church are actually not grounded in the word of God. And here Paul says, you are first a teacher of the right things before an administrator of things. So yes, uh, Timothy, when you will be required to do some administration of God's work, that is clear. But you are first and foremost a teacher of sound doctrine. And that is something that uh, I think we need to remind ourselves, particularly when our, our, our our churches have to elect leaders like elders. We tend to think these days about, uh, you know, does he have good um, leadership qualities? Uh, can, you know, this elder or does she have uh, uh, any experience maybe from corporate? Uh, and it's not to say that those things are bad. There are also God's gifts to, to people. But when we read the Bible, really, uh, the most important thing is that the church should not die spiritually under your care. And by church, we are, as I've said, I mean every type of service. So the church at home would be the example we focus on uh, in this particular case. To say, you know what, as, as families, we are churches. And if God has put you in a position of being able to influence or direct uh, the spirituality of a family, it doesn't matter uh, the type of family that it is. And I, we spoke about these things already last year, that the type of family is irrelevant. But what God is saying is that a family should not die spiritually under our care. We should be are led to the fact that the primary duty of anyone in a position of leadership is to make sure that there is growth in teaching of sound doctrine. So whether it is our family privately or whether it is a, a, in a position of being a pastor or an elder in a church or it is in the position of being a, a teacher, so for example, to a, a children's class, uh, it doesn't matter. You are in position of authority over a church. You could be asked to teach a kindergarten a class in church, you know, the three-year-olds and the two-year-olds and the four-year-olds. It doesn't matter. That church should not die spiritually under your care. The first and primary duty of leadership is that there should be no spiritual death while you are present and so paul in the in the whole of a uh, first and second timothy challenges us to say please do not get swallowed up in thinking that your primary duty is of administration paul says no your primary duty is sound doctrine sound doctrine and this is something also that will affect us a lot as parents because you know uh, one reflects every now and then and you realize that 
most parents we really are caught in such a financially driven world that we have even reduced ourselves into financial parents in other words if we can buy it we have done well and so even to the point that we are not spending enough time with our families in prayer with our families in the study of the word but we can excuse by ourselves by saying i have bought what is necessary i am paying for what is necessary so in that way i am a good parent and the word of god would say no no your first and primary duty is a sound doctrine that is the key duty and that everything else we may buy or pay for should be then to support the life that is instructed properly by the word of god and it's something that we constantly need to remind ourselves um, as as parents uh, if, if i could give an example you know uh, many of us uh, here uh, we may have that experience that we were raised in settings where there was not much money but if we reflect on our parents many of us what would register them as the best what makes us fond of our memories with our parents are the teachings they left us with many of us when our parents died and left this world there was no inheritance that we received they were not rich they hadn't been able to build a a, a huge financial a portfolio for us but many of us we reflect on them with a sense of great joy a sense of gratitude to God for the parents that he gave us. And when we then ask ourselves, what really are we fond of? What is this thing that makes us remember them with such joy? It is precisely that they taught us things. They taught us. They didn't give us lots of money, but they taught us. And as we have uh, traversed through life, it is our interaction with life through those teachings that has made us reflect and say, man, I was really given the right tools, the right lessons to be able to face this life. You know, many of us, we are even more financially stable and more financially independent than our parents, but they are lessons in the management of the little that they had and how they used it to raise all of us and our siblings. We can reflect sometimes on those things and think to ourselves, that was a powerful lesson. How she or he or they managed to raise, especially because in many of our homes, uh, we were many, you know, unlike us today, we may have more money than our parents, but we are having lesser children. Some of us come from homes where we were five, six, seven, eight siblings. And the, you know, uh, maybe only the father worked. Um, if, if it was such a setup and uh, your mother was tending to the fields, um, or maybe both of them were working if uh, such a situation was available. Maybe both of them didn't work formal jobs, but they had land and they were tilling the land. They were farmers and they were selling the produce. And from there, they were able to then uh, take care of us. We reflect on them and we are able to say we were raised well. Why? The teaching, not the money they had, but the teaching, the, 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 the modeling of hard work uh, that they gave us. So those things are, are quite um, important that we remember that our greatest task is to make sure that we are teachers of sound doctrine in our families.